Hi everyone. I wanted to talk you through my process for finding research articles for any type of scholarly questions you might have. So the first resource I'd like to explain is Google Scholar. Google Scholar's affordances are it has very easy searching. It works just kind of like regular Google does. Um, the cite button gives you a citation, which is great if you need to make a reference list. They have very easy to click articles and there is also a cited by function that I will talk about in more detail, but it's really, really helpful. The constraints of Google Scholar are that you might not be able to get to the actual article and um, even though it has citations, they are often somewhat incorrect. So it gives you, I would say, like an 80%, 85% accurate structure, but you still need to check it. So when you use Google Scholar to find an article, you're going to get results that look like this. This top box, Influences of Attitude Towards Science, that I have in teal, that's the link to the title of the article, which will take you to whatever you're able to get to with whatever permissions you have. Underneath that, um, in the purple text box, are the authors. And what's cool in Google Scholar is if you click on that, it'll bring up all the articles that the, the author has written. Uh, the site, where there's the big quotation in the green box, will give you the reference. Again, that's usually mostly correct, but not all. And then cited by in the orange box here will tell you all the articles that have used this article after the fact. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. The other place that you're likely to get peer-reviewed academic articles is the MSU libraries. Now, the affordances there is access. As an MSU student with an MSU Net ID, you have access to any article that our library has permission for, but the key is you need to be logged in. So that's where with Google Scholar, if you can't get to an article, you can likely get to it through the MSU libraries. Constraints. I find the MSU library searching a little clunkier, but I have a couple pro tips to help you work around that. One is deleting all the punctuation and one is clicking see more. So those are very easy uh, workarounds. When you go to the MSU library website, this is what it looks like. It's a fairly typical search box and you would type in key terms or the name of the article in the top box, which is um, in a large orange rectangle here. And um, on the left side in the purple box is where the articles will pop up. And then that see more button area uh, in a green is my one of my pro tips. So when you are typing things into the search box, I highly recommend to delete all punctuation. It just makes it search a lot easier. And then if the articles don't seem to be getting you what you need, that see more option just seems to get to the right stuff. So those are my little pro tips to help you work around that. So you're using Google Scholar or you're using MSU libraries to find an article and you find one. Let's talk about what you're going to find in that article. So on the first page, you're going to find three things. You're going to find the title, you're going to find keywords, and you're going to find the abstract. And the abstract is a summary of the research article, and it's going to be your go-to place. In the body of the article, you're going to find two things. You're going to find the introduction, which gives sort of a history and a little bit of philosophy and background. And then you're going to find the method, which is how they did the study. Was it qualitative or quantitative? Was it a survey? Was it interviews? That type of information. In the results, you're going to find findings, discussion, and conclusion. The findings are what they actually came up with, their raw data, their stats, their tables, their charts. The discussion is the authors making sense of their findings, so they're going to interpret those for you. And then the conclusion, they're going to draw broader conclusions, broader patterns, make bigger statements. And then at the end, they will have a reference list which will list all of their sources. So. In determining whether the article that you have found is good for you or not, here's what I recommend. First, 
read the abstract. That's that summary on the very first page. If the abstract is not aligning with your needs, move on to the next article. But if it is helpful, then I recommend that you skim the introduction, skim the discussion, and skim the conclusion. And that may feel weird, but because articles are always designed in the same way, you're not missing out on information and you know what to expect in those areas. If in reading those, you continue to say, hey, this is, this is interesting, this is helpful, keep going, and then read the whole article and take some notes on it. However, if when you skim those, it is not helpful, you just move on to that next article. So if you've gotten to the point where you're reading the whole article, because it's interesting and aligns with your questions, here are the notes that I recommend that you take. I recommend that you make sure you get the reference in APA 7 format, write your own summary of the article in like a paragraph or so. And that's not an easy thing to do, but it's a really good practice because that will help you figure out how you're going to use the article to support whatever you're doing. And then make sure you make notes of connections to whatever you're researching. Then once you find one article, I want to tell you some hacks on how to get to your next article. So you might use a reference list from your article and that's going to give you other articles that your article reference. So it'll give you similar content from before your article was published. You also might use the cited by, which I mentioned earlier that I would come back to, from Google Scholar, and that's gonna give you all the articles that other people have cited the one that you're reading in. So in your reference list in your actual article, you could look up any of the references that they use, go find them, read them, see if those align with your questions. And so that would be looking back in time. And then in Google Scholar, you can use the cited by and that will show you any articles that have been published since the article that you've read about that use it. So it would be a similar content. So then you find it and then you're going to repeat the same process. You're going to skim the abstract. If that's good, you're going to look at the intro, the discussion and the conclusion, and then you keep repeating and repeating and that's research. So now it's your turn. Go forth.